hill overlooking the Australian city of Ipswich stands a memorial to Alan Cunningham, explorer and pioneer of this part of Queensland. Australia's Ipswich is an important industrial centre with a population of 26,500. It lies 25 miles to the west of Brisbane. And its people are proud of the fact that their city helped to build the capital of Queensland. For it was limestone from the hills of Ipswich that provided the mortar for the first permanent buildings of the big city of Brisbane. Day dawns in Ipswich as it does the world over, to the familiar clatter of the milkman's horse. The morning sun lights up the trees, and all the year round in this subtropical climate, the weather says a genial good morning. For coolness, the houses are built on stilts, and the gardens which surround them are brilliant with tropical flowers. The day's work begins. Ipswich railway workshops are the main centre of the city's industry. Nearly 3,000 men work here, building and repairing locomotives for the Queensland State Railways. Many live in Ipswich, others travel 25 miles each day by special train from Brisbane. The woollen mills are the hub of yet more activity. Ipswich looms turn out first-class serges, worsteds, blankets, rugs from finest Australian wools. The timber mills specialise in the manufacture of plywood. Queensland timber, with its beautiful graining, provides material for a wide range of fine quality furniture. The day shift is checking in at one of the coal mines which lie a few miles from the city. Among the miners, you will hear many of the accents of the British Isles, mingled with the Australian tones of the native born. From these pits comes more than half of Queensland's coal. Shafts have been driven as deep as 2,000 feet below the surface, and the seams are thick by comparison with those in other parts of the world. Young Ipswich starts the school day. From the primary schools, every boy and girl has the opportunity to go on to technical college and high school. For the lads who want to go on the land, there is the State Agricultural College near the city. Ipswich has two private grammar schools. The Boys' Grammar School, first of its kind in Queensland, was opened by the Governor of the State in 1863. At the girls' grammar school, an interesting magazine arrives from a school in Ipswich, England, forging a link between the children of the two cities. The schoolgirls of Ipswich study to be the housewives of tomorrow. They learn to produce meals suited to their warm climate, using the tropical fruits which grow in their own state. In this clean and pleasant city, life is not all housework for the women. They can fit in a game of golf or break the routine of household duties with a visit to the city's modern shopping centre. Shopping is still complicated by rationing, but the Ipswich housewife knows that Britain needs Australian butter and meat, and she balances her menu accordingly. This is not difficult, as the shops of the city are stocked with a wide variety of unrationed delicacies, fit for the most fastidious palate. Pawpaws, mangoes, pineapples, bananas, oranges, peaches and melons are part of the ordinary diet of the people of Ipswich. They can grow them in their gardens or buy them at every fruit shop. Lunchtime.
At the railway workshops, the men elect a committee to run the cafe. Each man orders his meal the day before. He has his regular place at the table, he walks in from the workshop, and there is his lunch. That suits everybody. The catering committee knows in advance what to provide, and the diner gets what he wants. Lunchtime leisure provides a chance for debate at the rostrum meeting. They discuss almost every subject under the sun, from early Australian explorers to the science of radar, from aerodynamics to child welfare, from soil erosion to empire relations. It's a good example of Australian democratic thinking. Then, back to the job. A vital job in the economic structure of Queensland. In the workshops, steel is forged and shaped to a thousand different uses. The network of lines of the Queensland Government Railways extends over 6,666 miles. Maintenance, repairs and new construction for the system are carried out by the Ipswich shops. The six years of war were a challenge to the Queensland Railways. A staggering tonnage of men and materials was carried by its lines when Queensland was a forward base against the Japanese thrust. Peacetime peaks were passed, then doubled, but the load was well borne. The Queensland Railwaymen were not to be daunted. The men who work in these shops have a feeling about the job. They reckon they get what Australians call a fair go. They work a five-day week, get holiday leave with full pay and free railway passes for their families and themselves to any station in Queensland. Compensation for injury at work, pensions at retiring age. They work with a sense of security, the most important step on the road to happiness. Job's over for the day, but the day is far from over. There's still time for leisure in the mellow Ipswich evening. For the garden lover, this is the best time of the day. The not so young can play open air drafts and get exercise at the same time, or just sit and watch. The five-day week in most Ipswich main industries leaves people with plenty of leisure to enjoy the natural beauty of the countryside. Cricket, of course, is the main organised sport in Australia, and Ipswich has been the nursery of many first-class players. There are good golf courses too, in and near the city, and bowling greens for the less energetic. For the young in heart, there's the constant delight of the river. Afterwards, there's tea, brewed in a billy over the fragrant smoke of gum leaves and supper on the riverbank in the cool of the evening. This, then, is the pattern of life in Australia's Ipswich, a pattern suited to a democratic people in a land of sunshine and plenty. Mm -hmm.